Today we're going to be learning how to draw a famous puppy. And we're going to take a look at some of the most famous puppies that other artists in throughout art history have used in their own paintings and drawings. So you can either create your own or you can follow along with me and draw a few different styles of dogs. So let's look at some dogs in art history. Here we've got Frida Kello with her little one, as you can see right here. We got Andy Warhol with his dog Maurice, which was a dachshund. Got Edvard Munch with his awesome puppy too. You can see his style. Iris Scott is a contemporary artist and here's hers. She does finger painting and you can see the water coming off of this dog as it shakes. You've got Picasso's dog, also a dachshund, and George Rudd and George Rodriguez. We also have some other ones here. I mean, look at how different each of these are. We've got the contemporary artist, uh, William Wegman, where he uses his dogs and dresses them up similar to people. We've got Norman Rockwell's Pride of Parenthood right here. Jeff Koons' large sculpture of a puppy. You know, George Surratt, you've got a dog out here in this scene running around. And even Keith Haring using his dog this way. So take a look at each of these, you know, from the first page and slide here, how different and unique each artist used and created their own version of dogs. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw our dog as a famous pup. You can add a crown onto your dog. You don't have to. Think about what would your dog have in the painting or the drawing? Would you add in a bed for it to sit on? Toys galore, um, you know, bones and all sorts of other various things. So let's dive into our project and get started with drawing. Here are some great examples of some work of what we're going to be doing with creating these really cool dogs um, using shape as well as color and line and a variety of things. So you can see here's my example that I started and you know really blending in we're going to get some really cool sparkles on here to make it look shimmery as you can see with the gold paint um, and then creating our own unique background. So we're going to play with mixing colors and really getting that feel in here. This is a student's example, so you can see how cool um, the background is for this one as well. And here's another royal looking dog, um, which we had a little white underbelly. And that is really cool, but if you didn't know that this had a white belly, you would think, oh, it's not finished here. So something that I'll work on and show us when we're looking at all of these things is how to just take a little bit of a color and make it look like it matches really well, but still keep that neat white effect. All right, so the first thing that we get to do today is decide the different dogs that we want to draw. And there's a really fun lesson that um, I have found uh, Deep Space Sparkle has some really cool ideas using their royal pooches as they said um, their lesson a while ago and we're going to play off of that and um, use some of those examples to inspire us. Think about would you want your dog to be sitting on something? How would you like it to be posed? What type of crown do you want to create? Does it have three points? Does it have several? What type of gems or crystals would you want to put in there? Um, so there's a variety of ones that you can look at and here's another one that I started and you can see the colors that we're going to blend and really play with. So um, when we do this we're going to go in and just play with a few colors to make this kind of golden and some browns and really mix and just come up with these really neat tones. So you can see how smooth it looks and how it goes from dark to medium and light and really covering it. And you'll also notice I don't see the full body um, except for one of them. So you're more than welcome to come up with your own version but I will show us how to do a couple of these and that way we want to really fill this 9 by 12 piece of paper. 
and then we'll go in with um, adding the paint to give that value of light to dark and dark to light to make it really stand out to get that final effect that we're looking for of you know really filling out the whole thing and doing a really nice cool color background so you can see how it contrasts really well here so the first thing that we want to do is I have this resource here from Deep Space Sparkle and she does a really nice job of how to draw the different dogs. Um, I can have these as a handout so you can come up with, you know, whichever style really stands out to you of which dog or come up with your very own. So you can take a look at some of those things. But the first thing that every single one of these starts off with is a crown. So think about the type of crown that you want. Do you want to have it where it's bubbled? Do you want to have it where it looks like a regular crown or something, you know, completely different? But we want to use that first big part of our paper. So whenever a dog or a person wears a crown, it goes around our roundish heads, right? So to do that, the first thing that we need is and I'm using a black crayon for this um, because we're going to use paint. And the black crayon kind of keeps the paint in the spaces that it needs to be, which I really enjoy. So using my crayon, I'm going to do, you know, a rainbowish curve, as you can see. And then think about, do you want to have some waves for the top of your crown or do you want it to be pointy? So for mine, for this one, I'm going to make it pointy you can create any style that you so choose. And then you want to connect it down like such. And then think about what else do you want to have it on your crown? Do you want to have gems? Do you want like a big, you know, diamond shining inside of it? You can have it any which way you want. You can have little hearts on top. It's up to you on whatever you feel will stand out best for you. So take a moment to really decorate your crown and add all those fun little features and things that you're looking to do. Once you've decorated your crown the way you want it to be, and on, you can add as many cool details and things as you want. The textures, things that really make it stand out for you. We're going to color this in later, so just know that it's going to take a little bit of time on here. Okay, so um, the faces of your dog. Think about a dog that really stands out to you, something that makes you smile and laugh and all those other fun little things. So I'm going to choose the, you know, the French Bulldog because, gosh, they're so darn cute, aren't they? So to draw the French Bulldog, what you're going to do is you're going to create this wave like this. because they have that big wrinkly face, right? And then we're gonna give them their cute little chin. And then let's give them those little teeth that stick out. They don't always have that perfect expression either, right? And come up with, you know, the nose. I'm going to do a cute little nose like this. And I'm going to color it in just a little bit, make it nice and thick in this area. 
Okay. For those of you that wanted to do a different dog, you can, you know, create a different face. Think about, you know, here's another one of how to draw a Cocker Spaniel face. It does similar to the same thing. Um, there's a variety of different ones that you could do. But create your dog the way you want to create it. Again, these are really great resources that I found. I have some um, pictures for you to look at and come up with your own. But draw whatever you want. Maybe you want your dog to have its tongue sticking out. Maybe it has a ball in its mouth or a bone. You know, what would a really super spoiled famous puppy look like? Or your dog. How would you draw to your dog so your dog could be a famous dog? So add in the nose styles that you enjoy the most. Create your own eyes. You can give them eyelashes. You can have small eyes, big eyes, those shiny eyes. Um, think about the ears on your dog. Are they fuzzy? Is one ear up and one ear down? Are they both up? You know, you can create any version of a dog that you would like. There is no wrong way to create. So here I drew my eyes, I gave some eyebrows, and then I'm just going to do some wavy lines to make a fuzzy, fluffy looking ear and connect it to my dog. You could do the same that way with yours. Have yours have a collar. You could add spots on the face or little markings that you might have for yours. It's entirely up to you. Because every dog is a little different, right? You could add whiskers. You don't have to add whiskers. You could add the little dots for yours. It, you know, whatever you feel that looks like yours. If you want your tail to show through, you could add in a tail if you have space. If you're drawing a smaller version, you can also go in and have your dog sitting on something or have a pattern of bones or balls in the background. It's up to you. So here I'm just going in and adding some extra features. Come up with any version you want. And just like all artists, if you find that you're working and you're just not enjoying the one that you're starting to draw, flip your paper over and you can start creating your own. Maybe somebody near you has inspired you. And you know, just think about your type of dog that you want to do. You could add extra things. Is your dog wearing a hat? Does it have a bow in its hair? Does it have a bandana? So play with all of those different things and make yours. And that's what we're going to start off with is just drawing our dogs and with as many details as we possibly can. Okay, so for this part of our project, we're going to get ready to paint. And we're going to be using three colors. We're going to be using brown, yellow, and white. And we're going to learn how to mix all of these colors to create different shades and different tints. So um, when you're using, what I mean by that is anytime you add white to something, it's going to make it lighter. And that's called a tint. And a shade is usually when you do um, black, where you add the black in. But we can use some pure hue colors, <clears throat> like the brown and the yellow, but we can also use the white. And since brown has a lot of other colors already mixed in it, you might notice that your yellow might turn an orangier color or other different characteristics when we mix these two together. So we're gonna be playing with just coloring in our dogs first and what I did with this is I used my regular tempura paint and I let it sit out and dry so it's kind of nice and dry and I'm going to re-wet it and get it nice and wet so we can paint with that. Normally this is what the paint would look like and in the art room when we're usually in the art room I will have it on a waxier piece of paper and I'll have these nice little areas that we can maneuver and work with as well as you know the cool colors that we'll use for the background. So let's get started and take a look at what we're going to do. 
Now using a cup of water and our paints that we have, we can wake this up. So using the water, I'm gonna wake up my paint and it turns it into almost a cool watercolor effect. So now you can see I can paint with this paint on here and just use that to get a nice effect. A lot, not a lot of water, but just enough water is gonna wake up some of these different things. Um, and that's what you know cake trays usually are that we usually have in the room too. So you can go through and paint using this all the different colors. You can put some brown on top and the yellow and work with it that way and add your white and really just play with those different colors. For the rest of this video, I'm going to be using our other paints just so you can see how those ones work and create a cool effect um, for painting as well. So typically if you're using tempera paints like we have here, what I usually do is I'm going to take like say a chunk, just a little bit. You never want to use a ton of paint and you can spread it on here. Now, not like watercolor, you don't want to use a lot of water when you use this paint. And then I usually grab a little bit of another color and you can mix it right on your paper. Or another option is you would then mix it right directly on your paint palette. So look at this nice color that I made in the in-between here. And you can paint with it just like that. If you wanted to make it lighter, you would add the white and notice how it adds a different color. So I'm not grabbing a ton of paint. You can add texture by, you know, touching your brush on like this. There's so many different ways. You could even grab a little bit of white and add it directly on and kind of create your own little effect this way or add some shadow. Notice I'm never grabbing the paint from the middle because if I do that, then I'm gonna change all of the paint. And I don't wanna change all of the paint, I just wanna change a little bit. So I want you to have some fun, experiment with your paint, and all we're gonna do right now is decorate our dogs. <laughs> The nice thing about the colors that we're using is you don't need to rinse your brush. You'll notice I'm just painting as I'm going and I'm not even going back to rinse my brush because I'm using so little paint. If you cover any of your black areas, you can use that darker brown and just paint over those lines that you have to create some of those fun looks. When I use my brush, I actually can turn it. You can paint going this way. You can paint turning it like this on the side and drawing. Um, that's how I can add some fun little sides and decorations that I want. And the wavier lines are the better. So think about how would you pet your dog, right? Would you pet it a different way um, where you're, uh, using where you would you know, paint, pet them this way or different things. So as you paint, imagine you're petting this cute little puppy. How would you pet them? That's how you should paint. A lot of artists think about that as they're doing it and think about how you would brush your own hair. That's how you would draw hair. It's the same way with animals. So as you're doing this, remember you don't need water because we don't really need to rinse our brushes. We're using very similar colors and where you're not using a lot. So just 
play with what you're creating. Use very little paint as you go and blend those colors on your paper and see what you can create. <laughs> Once you've gone in and you've done your dog and you added all your details, you'll notice I really didn't use much or at all a ton of my paint here. So as I finished it up and I just went into some areas that it dried, the reason we started with the dog first is so that way we can let this area dry for ourselves. The next thing is you can see my brush is not that dirty, but I don't want to mix these colors with our background. So I'm gonna use my water and I'm going to push my brush deep down to the bottom and I'm going to turn it around and spin it so that way my brush gets nice and clean. And then I wipe on the inside. This allows the water to not drip down the backside here and puddle everywhere. So you can see why we don't use a lot of paint because look at this water, it's filthy. And it would never get clean again. So. What you're going to do now is we're going to use our cool colors. So we used warm colors for this area here of our dogs and now we're going to use our cool colors. So you can do that with your bows. You could go in and do the bow using crayon. You could do crayon for the background or you can use your cool colors that I have here and really play with a design or a pattern. So remember a pattern or a design is something repeating. We want to keep it kind of in the background, so come up with whatever version you want of a design and that's going to make your dog really stand out. So this is a background, it should just be a pattern. You could do stripes, you could do shapes, and you'll notice my brush is still really wet and that's why you're seeing this see-through. Now if my brush wasn't that wet and it's drier, you'll notice how thick the paint is. That's another reason that when we're using this paint, we really don't need a lot of water. So, and I'm not gonna rinse my brush, I'm just gonna keep playing with these colors and come up with my own background. So why don't you have fun designing your own right now? <laughs> 